Hey guys, got another knife review here, and uh, this is the HNK uh, 14205. And uh, on paper, this knife doesn't look like it should be, uh, like it could compete with other things out there. But once you get it in your hand, you really feel the uh, excellent quality and, um, you know, just craftsmanship in this blade. Uh, the PLU, or philosophy of use for this knife, would probably be just about anything. Um, this knife can really flex in lots of different directions. Um, it could be an EDC knife, a uh, 3.4 inch blade, so um, long enough that it could you know, also serve in a, a defensive role, and strong enough, um, definitely a very well built folder. Um, it could also be a, a full out tactical knife, um, if you wanted to take this in a uh, maybe a tactical loadout. Um, if you could take the weight, it's a 5 ounce folder. So, some of you guys out there that you don't think that's very heavy. Um, but, you know, it's not feather light either. Um, and one th other thing I want to say about EDC is that this may not be the best EDC knife for one simple reason. That is price. This is about a $120 folder. Um, if you're just going to buy some folder to go cut up drywall at a construction site, uh, there's much better options for a lot less money. But, you know, you could definitely carry this. And uh, my philosophy is I only want to carry one knife with me. Um, so, you know, always have it clipped to my right hand pocket, I'm right handed. Um, so I only have to reach one spot no matter what I'm doing, whether it be defending myself or, you know, cutting up tomatoes. So, um, this knife could definitely do that. Okay, the uh, blade on here is probably one of the highest, one of the best parts of this knife, in my opinion. It is 154 cm, which is an excellent steel, a good corrosion resistance and everything else. Uh, what I understand, it's an upgraded uh, 440C, you know, better corrosion resistance, uh, uh, edge retention, uh, very good steel. I've always had very uh, good experience with it. Um, the uh, blade shape on here, it is really a very cool blade shape. It has adequate belly through here, but yet it has this uh, unsharpened swedge on the back, which I really like. Um, provides much better, you know, piercing capabilities and everything else. But yet, unlike some models that I've seen where they have that, and then by doing that they reduce the strength of the knife so much that I'd never want to have to stab something with it because it'd break, in my opinion. Um, I don't think that they did that. I think they retained the strength in this knife while still adding that swedge. So that's really cool. And the thickness on here is 0.150 inches thick. Um, so that's a very thick blade. And um, it's thicker than most 3mm thick blades. Like the uh, Manix 2, this is 3mm. 3mm, by the way, is 0.25. Uh, and this is 0.15. Uh, so, um, definitely, you know, thicker blade. It doesn't seem like a huge margin, but when you look at it and compare them in real life, or in person, um, you definitely notice it. It's a thick blade. It's not going to break on you, unless you're just doing something extraordinarily tough with this. The grind on this blade is full flat ground from kind of the three quarters point, which I really like. Um, I guess it's not full flat ground from that. It's flat ground from there. And um, so I really like that. One criticism I had in my uh, mini Griptilian review is that they started that grind too low, around the half point. So I um, really like the, the uh, grind on here. It's not exceptionally sharp. And um, it's very sh it's sharp. Um, it'll cut up all the stuff you want it to. However, it's not hair shaving sharp. And my comparison for that is some of the spider co's. And uh, Spyderco really gets their out-of-the-box edge right on everything I've held. So it's it's good edge out of the box, but not amazing. You could definitely reprofile this, or just touch it up on your own and get a better edge on there. So good out-of-the-box edge, not great. Um, and it does have a, a dual thumb stud that you can take off with a mini torque spit, by the way, if you wanted to for any reason. Okay, the uh, construction on this knife. It is a, a, a uh, axis lock, which I love. Love axis locks. My probably my favorite locking mechanism, and uh, my second favorite being the uh, cage ball lock by Spyderco, which is 
you know, in functionality, kind of a knockoff of the Access. So I really love these side locks. Um, and really bank vault-like uh, lock-up. No play in there, up and down, or side to side. Um, so I love the Access lock. This one's not quite as smooth as maybe some of the, like, the Griptilian or the uh, 940 Osborne. However, it's uh, still very smooth and uh, really excellent. The uh, it is a um, G10 handle, uh, very high quality G10. Um, probably some of the best G10 I've felt. Um, it's a little bit coarser than maybe like the uh, Spetico Police G G10. Um, this G10 is a little bit finer. They're both excellent. Um, I don't know. I may prefer this G10 on the uh, H and K, just because it's a little bit coarser. But yet it doesn't feel so much that it's going to abrade your pockets. Excuse me. Um, it is steel lined, and those steel liners are not skeletonized, which adds some more torsional strength. However, generally I prefer my knives to be skeletonized. Um, but, you know, um, I may make an exception in this one just because it adds such a solid feel to this blade. Um, really solid. And, uh, it weighs 5 ounces. So they could have probably shaved a little bit off by skeletonizing it. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't complain if they skeletonized it. But some guys out there, you know, like their solid steel liners. And, um, you know, it gives them peace of mind that it's, uh, you know, very, very strong. Uh, by the way, guys, the um, blade centering in here is perfect. Um, absolutely perfectly centered. And, you know, just goes with that exceptional quality that this knife has. It is pillar construction. Um, so that's great, you know, all the mud, blood, and guts can just flow right through there. You can wash it out easily. It's mini Torx bit construction, which I'd expect. Um, and, you know, so you can take it apart if you need to. Uh, getting to the clip, it is a blackened clip. Matte blackened, almost, it looks almost like a kind of a powder coating or something. It's, I don't think it is. Very good clip, though, on here. You can take it from left to right. Now, as you guys know, may know, um, I've said in some of my reviews that I prefer a, uh, a, a matte silver clip, and I'll, I'll stand by that. However, I, I like this clip too. Very good clip. The position on the handle, um, as always, you know, I want it to bury as deep in the pocket. It'll bury about that deep. So not perfect, but it's not too bad either. Um, it's better than the Manix. Um, it's better than the uh, Police G10. So, um, you know you can only expect so much I guess okay the, um, the this knife is fully ambidextrous because of that clip uh, the axis lock and that thumb stud so if you're a lefty this knife will definitely work for you uh, and this clip is not quite as strong as maybe this Benchmade style uh, clip uh, this is a little bit stronger however I think that if they put this on here it may start to abrade your pocket. Um, not like big time, but maybe just a little. Uh, so this is strong enough to keep it in your pocket and retain, but not so much to just crunch this G10 into your pocket. So that's very good. Um, other models or colorations this comes in. It does come in a Tonto version. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the Tonto version of this. It just looks a little too artistic or something. Um, it just The blade, it doesn't look... Um, as functional as it just looks like it's marketing and just trying to get it to sell. So I'm definitely a fan of this blade. Uh, they it does come in a combo edge. Um, I'm definitely a fan of the uh, plain edge. And it does come in a smaller version um, called the uh, 14210. And uh, that knife's more around the size of just like a mini griptilian, the blade being just under 3 inches. So um, maybe if, if you have a law against uh, blades over three inches or you just prefer you know those um, you can definitely get this knife in that it'll be cheaper too <clears throat> that takes us into uh, weight uh, this is five ounces which is not super lightweight however if you compare this to other knives that maybe are very well built heavy duty knives maybe like the zero tolerance stuff um, this probably isn't maybe quite to that level but it's very strong um, and other knives, those knives can be upwards of, you know, six, seven, eight ounces. I know the uh, new Cold Steel AK-47, uh, full size, that thing's, I think, around 
uh, five ounces ish um, like this so it's reasonable uh, not feather light but reasonable and the price on here is around 115 to 120 dollars by the way guys this is all as of you know when I'm shooting the video 2010 okay so not a super cheap knife um, and being that there's a lot of competition for it um, one of them being the uh, Spyderco Police uh, this is a, a very good knife uh, maybe not quite as strong simply because of the blade thickness on this but this is five ounces as well and as you can see you get some extra reach out of this one so I think you're maybe just kinda sacrificing a little strength in this for some extra reach and this is a little bit slimmer in, in a dimension too um, the uh, Benchmade Griptilians, um, those knives are, they're good, um, they're very good knives, however they don't have um, the thickness and blade, they don't have this blade shape, um, and they don't have the G10, but, you know, um, they're they are good knives too. Uh, maybe the uh, Spyderco Manix too, this knife here. Um, this knife's around the 75 to uh, $80 mark, but yet still 154 cm steel. G10, and this is a cage ball lock, so similar in style there. This knife's maybe a little bit smoother. Um, however, this knife I've had much longer and used much more, so it's probably loosened up a bit, which I would expect this will loose up, loosen up a bit too. Um, but, you know, excellent knife here. And that reminds me of one thing, looking at this knife right there. That's a lanyard hole. This does not have a lanyard hole. So, um, not a deal breaker for me. I don't really use lanyards, but it may be for you if you do. So, um, just something to, you know, remind you of. Um, and there's, you know, there's tons of competition for this. So, um, if this is not really what you're looking for, uh, definitely keep looking. But if it is, it's an excellent knife. I don't think you can really go wrong with it. Um, so, there you go, guys. Um, and really, this knife for me. This just has the cool factor in spades. I just, this knife's cool. I just love it. Um, good reverse grip, forward grip. I don't know. I just love it. So, uh, you can't really argue with cool factor, I guess. But, um, see you guys. Um, excellent knife here. I uh, can't really go wrong with it. So, maybe a little bit lengthier review, but uh, there's a lot to cover. So, see you guys. Bye.